I've been meaning to overhaul one of my investment accounts on Interactive Investor for a long time now. This particular account has swelled to just under £100,000, but the contents of the portfolio was a total mess and not how I wanted this money to be invested. We both spent a lot of time analysing and picking ETFs and stocks, much of which we share with you on this channel. But the prohibitive trading fees on the traditional investing platforms like Interactive Investor can affect investing behaviour. When I first started investing, I picked up some really bad habits. The result of this was I built a portfolio in this old ISA of mine that isn't at all how I invest today. You would think it would be as simple as just selling some positions and buying others, but it's not. I've been slowly correcting this account over time, increasing US and international exposure, lowering UK exposure, reducing individual stocks, selling crap stocks, and also buying precious metals. In this video, we're going to take a look at Andy's messy old portfolio on Interactive Investor, and then we're going to take a look at the new portfolio, why it's taken so long to fix, and why you might want to do the same. Constructing a new portfolio or rebalancing can be very expensive, so we'll also look at how we did this on Interactive Investor, all whilst keeping fees to a minimum. Let's check it out. Welcome to MillionChackle.com, the investment and finance channel and website that says you and your finance is free. That was Andy and I'm Ben and if you like what we say, hit the like button and click subscribe. The end of the tax year is fast approaching. Make sure you use as much of your ISA allowance as possible because if you don't use it, you lose it. Don't worry about what to invest in just yet. The main thing is that you get the cash into the ISA account before April 5th. You can worry about what to invest in later. New customers who open an ISA with free trade using our link will get free stock worth up to £200 when you credit the account with £1. Find the link on the Money Unshackled offers page linked down below. Why don't I use a commission free trading app? The quick answer is, I do, just not on this account. A lot of the problems I had with fixing this portfolio was that trading fees were altering my behaviour. I don't have these problems with my accounts on the free apps like Trading212 and Free Trade. Bear in mind that these apps have only been around for a few years and only recently have they had a wide enough investing universe to consider using. It's really annoying when you find an ETF or a stock that you want to pile into but it's not available on these apps. We know this is a frustration that is shared amongst many investors using the free apps. Another key reason I still hold this particular ISA with Interactive Investor is trust. They are the second biggest UK platform after Hargreaves Lansdowne and have over £30 billion of assets under management. If you also want to invest with Interactive Investor, check them out using the link below. The business models behind the free trading apps are all unprofitable and therefore pose a greater risk of losing investors' money if the company failed. Yes, there is the financial services compensation scheme to fall back on up to £85,000, but I'd rather not have the hassle. Having said this, I plan to use next year's ISA allowance with Trading212 where I currently do some of my trading as the Pi feature is awesome and one year's ISA allowance is a relatively small amount of my net worth. Old Portfolio This is how the portfolio looked prior to giving it a complete overhaul. It doesn't actually look too bad, but Andy had already been fixing this gradually over the last year to get it to a more respectable condition. Here, there are 5 stocks, but prior to this, there were around 20 all based in the UK and largely picked based on their dividends. There were also no precious metals not too long ago and international exposure, particularly to the US, was severely lacking. If you've seen some of our videos in the past, you may have seen us talk about using regional ETFs as the core of our portfolios. The idea was that you had one ETF for America, one for the UK, one for Europe, one for Japan and so on. There's nothing overly wrong with this approach, but more recently we built what we think is a superior core portfolio, what we're calling the ultimate portfolio. Why did the old portfolio need an overhaul? Going back to the old portfolio just prior to the overhaul, what's wrong with it? Well, all the remaining stocks were picked based on an outdated investment style. There's nothing wrong with investing for dividends per se, but we both have recognised that dividends are no longer as important as they once were thanks to commission-free trading apps. We think it's better to invest in companies that are growing and investors can always artificially create their own dividends by selling a few shares if they want. It's what's known as the dividend irrelevance theory. Also, the last few remaining stocks were such a small part of the portfolio that they were more of a distraction than a benefit. When you open your investment app, you want to see what's going on, but too many holdings, especially those with near zero weightings, just divert your attention away from the stuff that matters. 
Prior to this final call, I had already taken profits and cut some losses on a bunch of stocks. Some of the remaining stocks were still there because I felt they had been unfairly beaten down due to the sectors and the UK falling out of fashion. Nevertheless, no matter the upside potential of some of these stocks, as they now consist of such a small element of this account, the decision was made to sell. So what's wrong with these ETFs? Firstly, there are way too many. There are 11 ETFs and even that doesn't fully achieve what I've been able to do with the Ultimate Portfolio. There's no Canada, there's not enough small caps, not enough emerging markets, and the allocations aren't ideal for each region. There's also some overlap when you mix index providers. MSCI and FTSE both categorise things differently, so you can end up doubling up in some underlying stocks and missing out on others. This clouds the portfolio, leaving you unable to see clearly what you're investing in. Remember, we've been on a journey over the years. When I first started this ISA many years ago, I didn't know half the stuff I know now. Moreover, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF is what is known as a physical ETF. You may recall us talking about synthetic ETFs more recently because these can give added tax benefits. For example, synthetic S&P 500 ETFs avoid paying the sickening 15% dividend withholding tax that the US government steals from dividends paid to international investors like us. In any one year, this drag on performance is not too big a deal, but over decades this lost income compounds and can be worth a small fortune lost, possibly a few hundred thousand pounds over an investing lifetime. Another issue with having too many holdings is the exorbitant cost of rebalance, which is a key reason why I've been so reluctant to do it all at once. With around 30 holdings in a portfolio and £8 per trade, this would cost around £240. Maybe it's the dawn of commission-free trading apps, shaping my expectations, or maybe just the principle. But being forced to take a moderate hit to the portfolio was stopping me from making the necessary changes. The new Ultimate Portfolio This is Andy's new portfolio for this account, and it's exactly the same as the Ultimate Portfolio that we regularly talk about. What's more, if you're on Trading 2 and 2, we have built an almost identical pie there, so you can easily copy it if you wish. We'll put the link to that in the video description below. We did a dedicated video on this very portfolio some time back, explaining why we included each ETF, so we won't repeat that here, but let's take a quick look at why we both invest in this portfolio. Number 1. Tax dodging, ass kicking. As we mentioned, synthetic ETFs kick ass, specifically the robbing US taxmans. The Invesco ETF, which is the largest allocation in the portfolio and itself dominated by US stocks, is synthetic, so you keep more of the gains and less goes to thieving tax jurisdictions. Some people fear synthetic products, but even physical ETFs are risky as they undertake securities lending, which adds another layer of complexity and risk which most investors are totally unaware of. Number two, easy to manage. Five ETFs gets you access to the entire world plus gold and silver. The precious metal commodities are there to give some balance during economic disaster. Also there's great flexibility allowing you to increase or decrease exposure to small caps and the emerging markets as you see fit. Small caps and the emerging markets are what we're both very bullish about right now and this portfolio allows you to increase your allocations over what a generic world tracker would deliver. By keeping the portfolio to just a handful of ETFs, Andy will now be able to chop and change it with no concerns about huge trading costs. With ETFs, we both tend to invest for the very long term anyway, which means neither of us tend to change direction very often, as we might do with individual stocks. Number 3. No more trading fees Interactive Investor have a free monthly investing service, so I'll be able to keep converting cash currently held in the portfolio into ETFs free of charge. You also get one free trade per month, so Andy will be able to run this portfolio including the occasional rebalancing with no further charges over the platform fee. The platform fee is £10 per month, or £120 per year. As a percentage of this particular pot, that is just 0.14% annually. Not bad at all. Back to the new portfolio, one thing you may have noticed is there is a huge pile of cash just sitting there. Ideally, I want to get this invested as soon as possible, but it's currently only being drip fed slowly. The reason for this big pile of cash is because much of it is from transfers in from old cash ISAs and innovative finance ISAs. With the market seemingly very expensive right now, I'm reluctant to shove it all in at what could potentially be the top of the market. This also gives me a nice little war chest at hand should an opportunity present itself. How to minimise interactive investor fees For those that currently use interactive investor or are considering investing with them, here are our top tips to minimise fees. 
Use the free regular investing service to build your portfolio. Use the free monthly trading credit to make any occasional tweaks. Keep the number of portfolio holdings low to minimise unnecessary trading. Temporarily switch to the most expensive service plan if you have lots of trades to do as the trades cost £4 instead of £8. I did this and then instantly switched back, costing me just £10 extra on top of a normal service plan. And grow your pot as fast as possible to reduce fees as a percentage of your pot. If you have less than 30 grand, you should probably consider cheaper platforms as interactive investors flat fee can hurt investors with small pots. Tidying up my other pots. Other than the idle cash, this account is looking much better. I've got a few other accounts that I need to repeat a similar exercise with, including a SIP and general investing accounts. I'm fortunate enough to have filled my ISA allowance the last few years, so any excess money has had to go into taxable accounts. You need to be a lot more careful what and when you sell in general investing accounts, as it can trigger a chargeable event, so I can't be as gung-ho with these. As for me, being mainly a property investor until just a few years ago, when I massively branched out into stocks and ETFs, I don't have the problem of several years of messy stocks to tidy up, but as far as problems go, it's not a bad one to have. Question of the day, does your portfolio need a total revamp like this? What's stopping you and what needs doing? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. On this channel, we talk a lot about personal finance, investing, and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please click the subscribe button below. This is moneyunshackled.com. See you next time.